I'm a target here because of my human rights work. Almost every Shia family here have one or two people in prison. The whole international community and Western government are silent. On January 20th, Nabil Rajab, Bahrain's most prominent human rights activist, was sentenced to six months in prison for a tweet. Nabil was convicted of insulting the Bahraini government under Article 216 of the country's harsh penal code. Vice News was with Nabil when he received the verdict. It is a politically motivated case. I'm a target here because the work I do with the UN, because of my human rights work. They have decided that two of my uh, tweet that I have made criticizing the terrorist group and their relation with some military and uh, some security institution as an insulting the institution. In 2011, pro-democracy protests kicked off in Bahrain inspired by the Arab Spring. Peaceful demonstrations were brutally attacked by Bahraini forces, backed by troops from Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates. Vice News travelled undercover to Bahrain to witness the ongoing struggle between the predominantly Shiite protesters and the Sunni-ruled government. Britain has gone a step ahead, is not only silent, by supporting the government and also trying to present government as a, a government that respects the human rights. They try to do a PR for Bahrain government. Situation of human rights going backward. But when you come to listen to UK government, you see a different story. And this is the problem we have with the British government. It's not only about silence now. It's about weakening a movement that is calling for democracy and human rights. Widely spread now. UK has a bad reputation in Bahrain. Although I disagree with action, but in the past uh, few weeks, we've seen a lot of protests gone against the British government where they burn the British flags. Bahraini activists have accused Western governments, and Britain in particular, of ignoring their plight in favor of lucrative arms and oil deals with the Gulf states. In December, Britain announced that it would build a $23 million naval base in Bahrain. Last year, Britain classified Bahrain as a priority market for weapon sales. On January 20th, British Foreign Secretary Philip Hammond praised Bahrain for improvement in its human rights record, saying it is a country which is travelling in the right direction. It is making significant reform. When it comes to their relation with the Gulf country, they see it through their interest. It's all a thing about arms sales, and they always play with that card. Quite silent, we buy more arms. And you can see that it's very much connected. Whenever there are things and where the Western government are quiet about it, United States or United Kingdom or France are quiet about it, you'll see the amount and the percentage of military business and sales and arms sales are going to be more. It's shocking that the UK, for example, has not been more outspoken, more assertive about the fact that people have been tortured, people have lost their lives, people have been shot at. There are significant numbers of people who are still imprisoned, some with life sentences. There are 13 particularly high-profile activists. Nabil Rajab is one of them. There is a concerted attempt to deal with people like this through repressive means, but there are many who are less high-profile who have similarly suffered. The original tweet that landed Nabil in trouble with authorities concerned the Islamic State. The tweet alleged that IS fighters are actually coming from inside Bahraini security organisations. At least a hundred Bahrainis are thought to have joined up with the Islamic State so far. The statement I made on my Twitter account to highlight an issue which was ignored purposely by Bahraini government because they think the extremists are in their side now. The extremists are anti-Shias and majority of our opposition are Shias. So they want to use those groups against this group and that's why they are silent. Bahrain government always talk about terrorism in the newspaper. But when they talk about terrorism, they mean the opposition. They don't mean ISIS. They don't mean Al-Qaeda. So what I'm saying is that we don't know what is the clear policy towards those extremist groups so far. Back in 2012, Nabil was jailed for participating in anti-regime protests. He spent two years in prison and claims he was tortured. I don't speak about my torture because what has happened to me, comparing to my colleagues, is very minor. 
I have my colleague Abdelhadi Al Khawaja. He was the head of the Bahrain Center for Human Rights before me, and he was sexually abused. He lost many of his teeth. We have one man who is few weeks ago were tortured to death, and we've been having or receiving stories more and more of people are being tortured systematically and dying with the silent and absence of international reaction, which has been uh, seen here as a green signal by our government to continue the repression against the people of Bahrain. The revolution is going to continue for sure, because uh, since it has continued since the past four years, so I have no reason to think that it's going to stop. It's not like 2011 that you see one protest with 100,000 and 200,000 of people because that's not allowed anymore. Those people will be attacked. But you have hundreds of protests every day taking part in a tenth of villages and area in different parts of Bahrain. My work is to continue the struggle for human rights and justice in this part of the world. And I think I'm one of those people who are willing to pay the cost uh, for a better future for my children to have a better life than the life we had and the repression we have faced in our time. And I'm one of the people who become more stronger when because of jail. And every time they'll put me in jail, I will be coming out more determined and committed to continue the struggle. Around 15,000 Bahrainis have reportedly been arrested since the uprising began. About 3,000 remain in custody. Amnesty International says that protesters as young as 13 are tortured in detention, blindfolded, beaten and threatened with rape.